So the other night I went clubbing because you know it's fun to go to a place that's cold, dark and smelly. And the party starts when you get to the queue and at, they had the bright idea at the end of the queue they have a TV that shows your passport picture or whatever and if you want I'll show you afterwards. Mine is like the missing member of the Jackson 5, it's amazing. <laughs> Especially when you're waiting in line and you have all these very attractive young ladies behind you, first thing they see of you, apart from the back of your head, is the Jackson 5 just sitting there looking at them. So once you've gotten past that debacle, you have to get to the um, uh, paying booth where you have to pay for the privilege to go in and then give them more money, which I don't really understand. But when you get in, I take advantage of that privilege straight away. So I'm standing like a plank in a sea of about 50 people, all trying to get drinks, although they're already drunk. And you finally manage to get through to the one of the two bar staff, and I order what, honestly, is probably going to be a watered-down drink. And as soon as I get my drink orders, and the little lady trots off and she goes, do whatever she does. Guy straight away to the, to the right of me, he says, oh mate, please, please keep getting me a drink, I'll, I'll give you the money, please. I say, okay, I'll try and be nice, I'll be nice to this man, and I'll, I'll wait for them. As soon as he's done, start taking the piss on the left of me, this girl says, please can you get me a drink as well? I was like, oh, fine, I've got to do this. So she comes back and I walk to say, Please can have four, four more drinks. So she all did, she comes, it all gets sorted and distributed fine. And guy, arsehole, he leaves straight away, doesn't say thank you. Girl left me, she says a very special thank you. So she straight away goes in for a grope, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it gets worse, she missed. <laughs> she hits there. Panics, we both panic. I'll turn my head, she goes in, she smacks me in the balls, straight away. So, at that point, we make eye contact, and it's horrible, because what's going through my head is, uh, this is happening, isn't it? Uh, and um, so she finally slides over, she managed to get my sausage in between her forefinger and her thumb. <laughs> and she gives it an almost painful little squeeze, and then runs, literally runs off, leaving me feel a little bit inadequate, but she was very drunk. Um, so late at night, because I do enjoy a bit of my dancing, um, I started thinking about how dance has really evolved. Because you think it started off as a way of Neolithic man just communicating with nature, doing rain dancing, which I have an idea actually evolved into Morris dancing, it explains all the weather in Britain. But um, that sort of slowly moved on to the grace and the elegance that is strictly come dancing, um, which somehow turned into contemporary dancing that they do in clubs which generally is either one or two things. One is what you can do while sitting on the spot with a drink, not spinning your drink, not really doing anything at all. The second is how much can I grind you till it's inappropriate and you leave or I come? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't done that one yet. Um, <laughs> That's the thing, is that there's a little thing inside my head, a little voice, and I like to call him Britishness. It isn't, isn't like schizophrenia or anything, I promise. But um, he's always there, he's like niggling away at me. It's like I went to a house party uh, the other night, and as soon as I get in, you don't, what you think normally when you're going is, oh, I'll talk to them girls, oh, it's a good time, I'll get myself a beer. No, first thing I think of, the health and safety procedure here is absolutely messed up. <laughs> I mean, it's a two bed flat, there's at least five people here. I mean, I don't know where they're fire assembly if anything is. I'm going back to the club. I mean, that, I presume, has a fire health and safety certificate. I haven't seen it. I've looked for it, but it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is just a minefield of just unseen dangers. I mean, you have unattended spillages absolutely everywhere. I report them, they don't do anything about it. Uh, you have potential sexual harassment cases, hence why I don't do the grinding. Um, on top of that, you have litter everywhere. There are bins literally everywhere. Use them, you assholes. <laughs> but the one thing that really gets me about Britishness in my head is that sometimes it can paint me into a corner. It's horrible. For instance, the toilet window is something I really can't get over. Say you've unfortunately gone for number two and it's a bit smelly. You have two options. You can either leave the window closed, which one the stink remains, 
or you can leave the window open. Next person use the toilet seat, it's freezing. Either way, I feel like an arsehole. <laughs> Thank you very much, I'm Reese. Bye. <laughs>